Our next speaker serves as the director of the Center for Military History at the National Institute for Defense Studies in Tokyo. He's worked there since 1986, about as long as I've spoken English, I think. He's an expert on military history and the history of Japanese diplomacy and war and memory in Japan. From 2006 to 2010, Mr. Shoji was also served as a committee member on the Japan-China Joint History Research Committee, which was a group created by the Chinese and Japanese governments to address historical inconsistencies, especially relating to World War II. He's also a visiting scholar at Freiburg University in Germany, and he's authored numerous articles in Japanese, English, and German. He received his MA and BA from the University of Tsukuba. Mr. Shoji will speak about factors affecting Japan's decision to surrender, which include a political drive to preserve the national polity, the impact of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, as well as what he calls an underlying relationship of trust between Japan and the U.S. Please join me in welcoming Director Shoji. Thank you very much. I'm very honored to invite me uh, to our uh, to Hudson Institute. So at first, uh, I'm sorry uh, I could not so good speak uh, English so good uh, like uh, other participant. So uh, I read the dra my draft. The, today, I would like to challenge the very sensitive theme about uh, the end of war for Japanese people. In World War II, the principle, principle of unconditional surrender declared in January 1943 at the Casablanca Conference made the termination of the war far more difficult. Indeed, Germany kept on fighting until Berlin fell and truly to sudden su surrender unconditionally. In contrast, Japan laid down its arms by accepting the Potsdam Declaration before the decisive battle for the home island began. As epitomized by the title of Japanese TV program, The End of War, why couldn't it have been decided earlier? The previous st studies in Japan have mainly focused on the analysis of the causes that delayed its surrender even after Japan was clearly militarily defeated. Analysts have attributed the delay to political leaders' belief that more favorable peace could be attained if the enemy could be dealt one final blow, or to political leaders' expectation of Soviet mediation, as well as to problem with Japan's political system. There is heated debate to this day on whether the primary cause that led to the termination of the war was the dropping of the atomic bombs, the Soviet Union's entry to the war, or both. In, in order to address the question of why Japan followed a cause quite different from Germany's towards the termination of its war, this paper shall examine the background and factors that brought about Japan's political surrender, while taking into consideration recent studies. It analyzes, first, Japan's war objectives, second, Japan-U.S. relations, and third, the military factor, specifically the gap between Japanese and American perception on the American landing operation on the Japanese home island. The Imperial Conference that was convened on June 8, 1945, approved the basic policy for the direction, for the future direction of the war. The basic policy that was adopted read as follows. Quote, 
on the uh, based based on the strength of its advantageous geographical position and the unity of its people, the Japanese Empire will prosecute the war to the end. This sentence took into an account domestic con consideration for the upcoming convocation of the Imperial Diet Session, while bearing in mind the wishes of the army. On the other hand, the cabinet inserted the following clause into the basic policy. Quote, in order to preserve the national polity, national polity means in Japanese koktai. The koktai means the uh, uh, imperial system led by the emperor. Preserve the national polity and defend the imperial land. Imperial land means the uh, home island. And thereby accomplish the objectives of the military expedition. As a result, Japan's war objectives, which until then were, for example, in Japanese, jison jie. Jison jie means uh, self-existence and self-defense, very ambiguous objectives, or building the greater East Asia co-prosperity co sphere, very big project. So such objectives were limited to the preser preservation of the national polity and defense of the imperial land. This has two important meanings for Japan's course towards the termination of the war. First, it came to be understand, understood within the cabinet that Japan would attain its war objectives if the national polity and the home islands were preserved, especially the former is important. Prime Minister Kantaro Suzuki later stated, this had considerations implications, considerable implications. I believe that the policy enabled the first steps to be made in our efforts to, towards the termination of the war. The cabinet understood the basic policy as providing a orientation towards the, the end of war. There is a classic work dealing with the termination of war authored by a very famous polit political analyst, Paul Keskemeti, of the Land Corporation in 1958, entitled The Stra Strategic Surrender, The polit Politics of Victory and Defeat. This book undertakes theoretical analysis of the forms of war terminations, comparing the experience of Japan, Germany, and Italy. In this book, Case committee note, the loser made, decided to qu quit because he feared that his core values will not suffer, even if the winner has his way completely and permanently. Because the Japanese leaders arrived at a shared understanding that Japan's core value, that is, the preservation of the national polity, was a war, was a war objectives. The guidelines for realizing the termination of the war became more clear. The question was how to achieve the obje these objectives through military forces or negotiations. Secondly, the principle of the building the greater East Asian co-prosperity sphere that had been underscored at the Greater East Asia Conference in 1943 was eliminated from the list of Japan's war objectives, and this served to further facilitate the termination of the war. In other words, as long as the principles such as the building of a co-prosperity sphere was the war objectives, compromise between the two sides was difficult, and therefore, there was a likelihood for the war to be fought to the bitter end. This basic policy, with such landmark significance, was approved in the following circumstances. The first, Germany surrendered 
on May 8. The second, as it as it became increasingly apparent that Japan was losing the battle in Okinawa, for which there had been high expectations, the momentum for pursuing immediate immediate peace quickly grew, as opposed to making peace after striking the enemy a severe blow. The German war was of a different nature from Japan's. It was a war of annihilation. In Germany, Fernichtungskrieg, in which the survival of the race and ideology was at stake. Accordingly, it was a war of victory or destruction, and peace through compromise was out of the question. This kind of ideology surfaced in an extremely way in the last stage of the war. In March 1945, Adolf Hitler issued his famous Nerv Decree, involving the destruction of all assets in German territory. At this time, Hitler stated, if the war is lost, then the nation will be lost also, because this nation has shown itself the weaker. The future belongs exclusively to the stronger nation from the East. Hitler's de desire for death and destruction was ultimately directed at Germany itself. On the other side, in Japan, during the Supreme Council for the direction of wo the war on August 14, 1945, the emperor stated, continuing the war will result in the war war nations being reduced to ashes. I cannot endure the thought of letting my people suffer any longer. Compared to the result of losing Japan completely, we can at least hope, hope, at least hope for reconstruction as long as some <coughs> seed remain. This decision is symbolic of the differences that exist between the Japanese and the German political situation and political leaders at this time. The second, I focus on the underlying factors behind Japan's acceptance of the Potsdam declarations, namely the so-called moderate people in Japan and the United States, as well as the relationship of trust that existed between Japan and the United States, even when they were adversaries. In Japan, certain groups sought to realize peace between Japan and the United States from early in the war. For example, on the very day of the attack on Pearl Harbor, former Prime Minister Fumimaru Konoe said to his aide, we will lose this war. I order you to study how Japan shall lose. It is the job of Christians to conduct this study. In January of the following year, 1942, Konoe stressed to Marquis Koichi Kido that the timing of the termination of the war should be considered as quickly as possible. The following this, on February 5, Kido advised the emperor as follows. This war will not be terminated easily, but it will be necessary to grasp any opportunity to achieve peace as quickly as possible. The tide of the war subsequently turned against Japan. Thus, from around summer 1943, key figures came together to promote efforts to bring the war to and under the leadership of a number of former prime ministers, including Fumimaro Konoe and Keisuke Okada. Other persons involved included Navy officers such as Mitsumasa Yonai and Sokichi Takagi, some army officers, and, uh, and a famous diplomat, Shigeru Yoshida. This movement first evolved as a campaign to overthrow the Tojo cabinet and result in its entire resignation. In addition, 
recent research indicated that there were even groups among mainstream army, army officers who had been considered a mo 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 monolithic group that aimed for the quick realization of peace. Many of these officers were assigned to the war direction sections of the general staff. In Germany, a resistance movement occurred in, occurred spor, sporadically, including the July 20 assassination plot against Hitler. However, partially due to the exile of many anti-Nazi Germans, such as Willy Brandt, who later became prime minister, Germany lacked a wide range of groups or movement which were in the political mainstream and which explored ways of achieving peace to avoid a catastrophe, as was observed in Japan. As for the Americans, the so-called moderates or, or uh, so-called pro-Japanese persons played a significant role. An example is Joseph C. Guru, the very famous diplomat of the State Department, who formerly served as Under Secretary of the State. In the speeches he delivered across the United States, Guru explained that the moderate or liberals exist in Japan, and that if the militarist clique, militarist clique were overthrown and the moderate or liberals placed in charge of the leading the government, Japan could be rebuilt into a country that collaborate with the international community. Guru argued that the emperor was on the side of moderate and liberals and defend the emperor system. Further still, these persons were heavily involved in the drafting of the Potsdam de Declaration. And as a result, paragraph 10 states, Quote, the Japanese government shall remove all obstructs to revive to revival to the revival of strengthening of diplomatic tendencies among the Japanese people, freedom of speech, of religion and of thoughts, as well as respect for the fundamental human rights shall be established. The clause, the sentence, quote, the revival and strengthening of democratic tendencies reflect the perception of the pro-Japanese persons. The diplomatic historian, very uh, famous historian, Makoto Iokibe, has referred to the extensive efforts made by these pro-Japanese persons as a good fortune in the midst of defeat that was bestowed on Japan unexpectedly. While no direct channels of negotiation exist between Japan and the United States, information on the activity, activities of the moder moderate or pro-Japanese persons and others in the United States reached Japan. For example, in his famous statement to the emperor in February 1945, Konoe State, to date, public opinion in Great Britain and the United States has not gone so far as to favor a change of the national polity. Of course, a part of public opinion is radical, and it is difficult to predict how opinion will change in the future. But it seems the United States would not go that far based on the views of Guru and the American leadership. It was intelligence collected by the Public Affairs Bureau and other branches of the Foreign Ministry that formed the base of such a view. The thought of Japanese intelligence significantly influenced Japan's acceptance of the Potsdam Declaration. In response to the Potsdam Declaration issued on July 26, which was followed by the atomic bombing of Hiroshima and Nagasaki and the Soviet Union entry into the war. The Suzuki cabinet issued an emergency telegram regarding the acceptance of the de declaration on August 
10. It reads that the cabinet accepts the declaration with the understandings that the, that the said declaration does not comprise any demand which prejudices the prerogative of, pre of His Majesty's as a sovereign rulers. The United States then issued the following reply by Secretary of State James Burns, the authority of the emperor and the Japanese government to, to rule the state shall be sub subject to the sub supreme command of the allied powers. Following this, opinion within the Japanese government became divided over how to interpret interpret the reply and how Japan should respond. That is, accept the terms, the inquire, or continue with the war. A recent studies has revealed that at this critical time, the intelligence of neutral countries, including Sweden and Switzerland, especially played an important role in the communication between uh, senior J Japanese and U.S. officials regarding the preservation of the national polity. <coughs> In any event, as a result of this development, the emperor commented to the Supreme Con Council for the direction of the war that while it is natural that we have some concern about our counterpart's attitude, I don't want to doubt it. Before and after making this comment, the emperor twice dissuaded the strong concerns expressed by army, army minister Anami towards the American reply, saying, quote, don't worry, Anami. I have conclusive proof, and I fully understand your feelings but I am confident that I can preserve the national quality. These remarks suggested that the emperor had obtained a certain amount of evidence through intelligence and other sources. Moreover, it cannot be ignored that the emperor and Prime Minister Suzuki had a certain degree of trust in the United States and therefore positively interpreted the information they have acquired. At the cabinet meeting on the 13th August, Prime Minister Suzuki stated as follows in regard to Barnes' reply, quote, from reading it over and over, I sentence that, that the United States did not, write, did not write it with evil intent. I believe that it will not essentially change the emperor system we should not object to the wording. To the Supreme Council, the Emperor also stated, I quote, I understand that there are various doubts regarding the issue of national polity. However, based on the meanings of the rest text of the reply, I take it that our counterpart, the USA, I mean, the, the United States has good intentions. So, a uh, historian has noted that, indeed, the judgment of Suzuki and the emperor were strongly supported by a simple trust in the United States and Americans. A well-known example of Japan trust in the United States is Japan's reaction to the death of President Franklin Delano Roosevelt. Prime Minister Suzuki expressed his condolences, saying, I must admit that, that Roosevelt leadership has been very ex effective and has been responsive for the American advantageous position today. The Prime Minister went on to say, for that reason, I can easily understand the great loss his passing, 
means to the America, American people, and my profound sympathy goes to them. On the other hand, on hearing the news of Roosevelt's death, the Nazi leadership was delighted that this would bring a turning point in the world. Thomas Mann, a German writer who was in exile in the United States at the time, write, Japan is now at war with the United States with life and death at stake. But in that oriental country, there still exists a spirit of chivalry and a sensitive to human dignity. It still respects a person who had died and respects a person of great character. There are some differences between Germany and Japan. This episode eliminated the differences between the Japan-US and the US-German relationship at the time, a relationship of the trust like that between Japan and the United States did not exist at all between the United States and the Nazi regime. By the way, in the preamble of present Japan-US security treaty, it is said, stated that desiring to strengthen the bond of power and friendship traditionally existing between them between them, between the German, uh, Japan and Germany, uh, Japan and the United States. The third, I consider the contrasting perception of the military significance between Japan and the United States on the decisive battle for the Japanese homeland, homeland which was codenamed Operation Ketz by the Japanese and Operation Downfall by the American by the American. From around spring 1945, around that time German was defeated, the Emperor had <coughs> to have much interest in the battle for the home, home island. For example, on June 9, 1945, the Chief of Army General Staff Yoshijiro Umez returned from an inspection of Manchuria and reported to the Emperor the content was very pessimistic. Japan's troop, strength, uh, Japan's troop strength in Manchuria was only equivalent to eight U.S. divisions, and Japan only had enough ammunition for a single battle. On hearing the, the, this report, the emperor began to believe that as the forces in the homeland are far more insufficiently equipped than the forces in Manchuria in, and China. There is no way they could fight. At around the same time, Prince Morihiro Higashikuni informed the emperor that not only the coastal defense forces, but also combat division were insufficiently supply, surprised uh, supplied with weapons and, uh, and that shovels were being made with uh, iron that had been salvaged from bombs dropping by the U.S. Air Force. Based on this in information, the emperor confirmed that war was impossible. In effect, the series of reports regarding the battle for home islands had a significant influence on the emperor's perception. But meanwhile, the army continued to call for, in Japan, Japanese, uh, Ichiok Sogyokusai, so-called Ichiok Sogyokusai, honorable death by uh, 100 million. And with continued confidence, and with con continued confidence, insisted that the battle of the Japanese home island be carried out. Nevertheless, the, uh, to the Supreme Council, the Emperor stated, the army keep t talking about decisive fighting for the home island, but the defense as the most important area have yet to 
be completed. In addition, the divisions, uh, divisions that will be involved in this battle are inadequately equipped. Given that, how can we win the war? The Emperor has referred to the incomplete preparation for the battle for, for the home island and not to the atomic bomb, bombing and the Soviet Union ent entry into the war as, a, as reasons for accepting the Potsdam Declaration. The Emperor added, what would happen if we are to plunge in the battle for home island in this conditions, will, will this mean that all the Japanese people will have to die? If so, how can we leave this nation, our nation, Japan, to posterity? It is not worthy that in this decision to the Supreme Council, as noted above, the emperor expressed his distrust of the military, stating that the actions of the army and navy commands were not in line with their plans, giving us an example the preparation for defending the home island. Additionally, the emperor noted that the conduct of the army and navy since the outbreak of the war showed significant discrepancies between their plans and results. These remarks sent shock waves among the army leadership. Torashiro Kawabe, deputy chief of the staff of army, wrote in his diary, the imperial decision was issued. In short, the emperor has no expectation for Japan's future operations. Kawabe went on to say, I am afraid the emperor did not arrive at this view as a re result of the debate during the imperial conference. The emperor has no trust in the military. It was an expression of his increasing distrust in the military. In effect, the distrust in the army that the emperor made explicit for the first time over the for the first time over the preparations for defending the home island was one of the reasons the emperor accepted the Possum declarations. This had a greater effect than military reasons encouraging, encouraging the army, especially in general staff, to give up on the war. Consequently, the looming reality of the battle for the home island and di diverging views that suffered between the emperors and the, the army decisively influenced the process of war termination, similar to the shock of the atomic bombing, bombings and the Soviet Union's entry into the war. For the United States, on the other hand, despite Japan's incomplete and poor preparations for a battle for the home island, Potential human losses present a major issue as the launch of Operation Downfall approached. In other words, Japan residual forces and anticipated suicidal attack were threat to the United States. Furthermore, the severity and the cost of the battle for Iwo Jima and Okinawa that the United States incurred due to Japanese military resistance. For example, the death or injury of uh, an estimated 35% of the American forces committed. The such cost provided a significant disincentive to proceeding with the landing. Of course, at the time, the various departments within the U.S. government each had uh, their own projection of the, for the number of deaths and uh, injuries from Operation Downfall. A number of recent studies based on, based on newly released historical records trend to estimate higher number of casualties. For example, 
today's speaker, Edward J. Dray, stated that based on ULTRA, ULTRA, that cryptographic intelligence on the Japanese military, American forces were aware of the Japanese military reinforcements de 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 in southern Kyushu. Dorea pointed out that uh, this led to a sharp rise in the United States estimate of the number of uh, its deaths and injuries, raising concerns about the operations among its authorities. In any case, concern about the military cost which, which would be incurred if the United States landed the Japanese home island led them to reconsider their demand for Japan's unconditional surrender and ultimately the war ended with Japan's acceptance of the Potsdam Declaration. Military historian, the very famous military historian, John Ferris noted that Japanese asset and combat that caused the U U.S. forces to incur heavy casualties in the Pacific theater did achieve some political objectives. Japan's its defeat achieved a victory of a kind. The conclusion. Had the decisive fighting taken place on the home island, Japan and the United States would have incurred even more losses of human life. Moreover, Japan's urban areas and the countryside would have been devastated and Japan would likely have been put under direct foreign rule and uh, would conceivable have been portioned uh, pa partitions, sim partitions similar to Germany. Japan, however, was able to avoid this tragedy by terminating the war quicker than German Germany did. Uh, this is perhaps the reason why Japan calls the termination of the war the end of war, Shusen in Japanese, Shusen, or Heisen, defeat in war. The, in Japan, Heisen or Shusen, uh, defeat in war or end of war. Why? Post war German, Germany refers to the end of its war as liberation or defeat. Liberation means liberation from the Nazism. And the defeat means the grasp. For Japan, on the other hand, the termination of the war literally signifies the end of war. Under circumstances of a military defeat, the termination of the war was achieved, accompanied by difficulties and sacrifices, despite agreeing to the disadvantageous terms of unconditional surrender. It was stated that Potsdam Declaration that the representatives of the United States, China, and Great Britain have conferred and agree that, agree that Japan shall be given an opportunity to end this war. Thank you very much. So thank you very much for that interesting presentation. And let's see if there are some, um, it's the guy who's got the key to my office again. Dr. Herman, you get the first question. Thanks. That was really quite fascinating, quite illuminating. And I want to thank you for that discussion about sort of the deliberative process by which Japan came to arrive at the idea they weren't going to win this one and that uh, certain there, there were only certain options that were available to Japan if this war was to end. But I want to come to the question about Japan's perception and particularly the leadership's perception of the course of the war. Um, after the war, John Kenneth Galbraith um, was part of the strategic bombing survey and went to Japan uh, to interview and to, to look at the significance and the impact of the strategic bombing campaign in Japan. And uh, one of the people that they interviewed was a Japanese economist. And they asked him, they said, uh, when did you get an idea that Japan might be losing this war, uh, given the fact that there was such heavy press censorship 
uh, and such you know, strict control of the information that would have been available. And uh, the Japanese economist said, well, he said, I began to get an idea that something was going wrong when our great and glorious victories kept taking place closer and closer to home. Um, my question goes back to the summer of 1943, um, when, as you have stated, a, part, a, a, a party began to develop of the idea that maybe Japan should look to a negotiated peace and that the Tojo cabinet needed to be overthrown and replaced. Now, what's interesting to me is, is that the summer of 1943, if I'm sitting in MacArthur's headquarters, or in Washington, or in London, I'm thinking the Japanese position in the war looks pretty good. Um, this is long before Okinawa, long before uh, Iwo Jima, long before Battle of Philippine Sea. It's even before the Battle of Tawa. Um, if I'm in, from Churchill's point of view in summer of 1943, he's still worried Japan is going to descend into India. And that the and that the British Empire in India is going to fall into Japanese hands. Was there some? And my, now my question: Was there some uh, issue having to do with the war? Was there a turning point in terms of the events of the war that led to this perception that the Tojo strategy was not working and that things should be changed? I'm I'm curious to know the answer. About the turning point, uh, I think that the, there is a, uh, many, many opinions. Well, for example, uh, today I pointed out uh, Prime Minister Kone, uh, former Prime Minister Kone Himaro. He, uh, on the day of the Pearl Harbor, he, uh, he said that the war is over. So, Japan, we, we Japan, so uh, studies uh, the end of war. So th that is a very rare case. So, of course, 1943 is very different, uh, uh, very uh, important for Japanese side. The military, uh, from the military viewpoint, so uh, the Japan Japanese army has built the uh, Zetai Kokuboken. The Zetai Kokuboken is, uh, Jap uh, so, uh, the Japanese, uh, uh, Japanese uh, defense zone in the Pacific period. But uh, the, uh, such zone was broken out by the American uh, invasion, uh, American uh, aggression. So th this is a uh, big point, the important point. So, uh, so this means uh, Japan could not uh, defense the Pacific area by themselves. So 1943 is very, diff uh, very important. So of course, the, for the Emperor and Hirohito, so for the Emperor Hirohito, the, the 1945 Okinawa, the fall of Okinawa is very important. The, after the fall of Okinawa, uh, he, uh, had, uh, he had take a leadership to the end of war. So, clearly. And, uh, economical viewpoint, eh? So, uh, frankly, frankly speaking, before the Pacific War, uh, Japanese economy reached the limitation. Before the economy. So, this means, uh, defeat. So, uh, clearly, defeat before the, uh, Pearl Harbor from economical viewpoint. So, th this is uh, different from the Germany. The G German economy has, uh, about the, the limitations 1943 or the 1944. But in Japan, uh, not so, uh, high. Uh, tagging on Dr. Herman's question, my question will be, well, you emphasize uh, the government position 
and uh, uh, also the wish to bring peace as quickly as possible by the elite, like former prime ministers. And uh, in 1943, from Western perspective, it might happen. But my question is, how much the Japanese elite had the control? It seems to me, in late 19th century and early 20th century, Japan's politics were very much controlled by the people on the streets. The popular sentiment of nationalism was so strong, and they actually dominated the future development. For instance, like I talked to uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Kawashima during lunch break. He talked about 1871, this equal treaty. But at the same time, people on the streets, including leftist feminist personalities were very much in favor of intervention in Korea. And when Chinese was ready to sign the very humiliating uh, treaty after being defeated in 1895, the radicals wanted to assassinate the Chinese minister who come to Japan to sign the treaty because they wanted to stop it. And I also saw a very popular Japanese movie, The Last Day, meaning the 24 hours before uh, Japanese Emperor Hirohito's recorded uh, a message to accept uh, uh, the unconditional uh, uh, surrender. And the, it was lower ranking a uh, military wanted to stop that, to fight to the last blood. So my question would be, had the Japanese elite got the chance to reach a peace, like in 1943? Could it? Could have it? That's my question. <laughs> so, uh, so, yeah. I think the uh, half and half. So, the, during the uh, Pacific War, the Tojo cabinet has very strong power. So, for example, uh, for, uh, for example, the very famous uh, diplomat Shirei Yoshida, who, uh, who was against the Tojo, was arrested uh, in the uh, military uh, police. So. Uh, it is very, uh, it was very difficult uh, that, uh, that time. So, political elite, uh, fought, uh, clearly against the uh, Tojo cabinet. But, uh, as you said, after the 1943, uh, it is, uh, yeah, uh, the, uh, possibility of uh, that uh, possibility that the uh, Japanese elite uh, produced uh, the end of war is uh, became uh, clear and become uh, higher, I think so. But uh, the, the war continued to the 1945. So in any way, uh, the, compared with, uh, yeah, Look at the German case. It is very difficult to end the war when the uh, war started. Sir. Uh, thank you, David Benowitz. Uh, uh, some people claim that the U.S. could have ended the war by demonstrating the nuclear bomb uh, in some neutral territory where no one got killed. Other people claim that there had to be demonstration of four essential things. First, that the U.S. had the bomb. 
Second, that the U.S. had the ability to deliver the bomb. Third, that the U.S. had the willingness to use the bomb. And in Nagasaki, fourth, that the U.S. had more than one bomb. Given the fact that apparently the order had gone out that if the homeland was invaded, all U.S. prisoners of war were to be immediately killed, and given the Kujo incident that uh, Mr. Sheng just referred to, could the U.S. have ended the war without, with a different policy than what it actually followed? So, so but uh, in, in Japanese side, uh, there is a uh, controversial tema, but there are various um, opinions. What uh, produced the, in the war at that time? The, the atomic bomb or the Soviet Union's entry in the war? Entry into the war or other, other elements that the, today's I pointed out, uh, uh, the, uh, the emperor's distrust on the military group. So very, uh, some different elements. Uh, so, uh, so it is very difficult to, uh, no, uh, only about the atomic bomb. Uh, yes, I, Dave Fitzgerald, retired Foreign Service. I have a question about the Japanese notion of Shusen. It seems to me that that's a, a concept that's uh, totally lost in an American understanding, in American sentiments about the, about the war. Uh, we prefer defeat or victory, but the idea of just determination of the war, the continuation of politics by another means, uh, is something that's kind of alien to the American sentiments on looking at the war. Is that how uh, exactly do Japanese look at this? I mean, there seems to be this debate that's going on for 70 plus years about about the war and responsibility and all that. And when you get into talking about responsibility, you're talking in these sort of uh, terms that are more clear than this rather vague notion of Shusen. I was just wondering what, how Japanese look at that and the whole question of responsibilities and maybe there should have been a better use of a term, maybe not Shusen, but maybe some sort of, something closer to defeat or mm -hmm. haibok or whatever the appropriate term might be. Of course, from a military viewpoint, that is a defeat, that is defeat. That Japan has clearly uh, defeated and in, in during the Pacific War. So, but uh, Shusen is uh, from the political viewpoint. Shusen, so ending the war. Uh, the, uh, I think that uh, Shusen, the, the end of war means uh, uh, the stopping the political political movement to end the war. take the chair's priority to ask one more question myself, if that's all right, and impose on your um, fatigue level. So you talked several times about the relationship of trust and about attitudes by the Japanese leadership towards the American leadership. Mm -hmm. When considering war, it seems to me there's two sides to the equation. One, which you documented, I think, is that what's the likelihood we're going to lose? And, a, and what's the cost of getting to loss if we keep going? There's much more cost. But there's another side, which is the consequences of defeat. And do I take you to say that within the Japanese calculations as they approach the end of war was a sense of who their opponent was and that within the American victory there would be terms with which Japan could survive? Yeah. So, this question. Mm -hmm. uh, so, the pre priest. Uh, one more time. One, one so, was part of the Japanese leadership's calculation at the end of the mm -hmm. war what they anticipated an American victory mm -hmm. would mean for Japan? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh. 
Mm. The, the in 1945, no? Yes, in, 1945. in 1945. So perhaps most of Japanese people could not be, uh, could not uh, think about the future after the defeat of Japan. So, for ex uh, exactly, so during the war, the, the army uh, stated that, uh, yeah, propaganda, eh? As propaganda, I mean, stated that after, uh, after, under the op 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 occupation, the uh, Japanese people, the, especially the Japanese men, was uh, killed by Amer by Americans. But uh, that only propaganda. But uh, not only uh, political elite, but also normal people, Japanese people. So that time could not think uh, about the future. This is a fact, perhaps. Thank you very much for your presentation.